मिसेस एक्स 65 इयर्स लेडी मैरिड होम मेकर हिंदू रेसिडेंट ऑफ जौनपुर उत्तर प्रदेश प्रेजेंटेड विद चीफ कंप्लेंट्स ऑफ ईयरलेस डिसकलरेशन ऑफ आईज फॉर द लास्ट वन मंथ विद जनरलाइज्ड ईचिंग फॉर द लास्ट टू वीक्स गोइंग टू द हिस्ट्री ऑफ प्रेजेंट इलनेस पेशेंट वाज अपेरेंटली असिम्टोमेटिक वन मंथ बैक व्हेन हर फैमिली मेंबर्स नोटिसड ईयरलेस डिसकलरेशन ऑफ आईज डिसकलरेशन वाज ग्रेजुअली प्रोग्रेस्ड इन सिंस देन इट वाज एसोसिएटेड विद डार्क मस्टर्ड कलर्ड यूरिन and a pale stool which was soft in consistency and floats on water there is no associated pain patient also complains of loss of appetite with generalized weakness she also complains of weight loss which was not measured however her usual clothes has become loose last two weeks she is also complaining of generalized itchiness which is hampering her daily activity and sleep it is relieved temporarily on applying emollients uh, there is no history of fever with chill rigor or night sweats uh, there is no history of episodic right hypochondriac pain flatulence or dyspepsia uh, no history of previous blood transfusion or any history of uh, previous episode of jaundice or any similar episodes of jaundice in the family members no history of vomiting with nausea or hematemesis no history of passing black tarry stool no history of passing worm in stool no history of abdomen distension no history of bone uh, or uh, or back uh, pain Uh, no history of fleeting pain or painful skin lesions at different sites uh, no history of uh, cough hemoptysis or chest pain or dyspnea no history of headache seizure episodes projectile vomiting loss of consciousness to the past history uh, patient doesn't give any significant medical history uh, or any uh, history of epigastric pain that is radiating to back uh, she underwent total abdominal hysterectomy 30 years back Uh, she underwent total abdominal hysterectomy 30 years back for fibroid uh, but no documents are available uh, she is a non known diabetic hypertension copd or chronic kidney disease coming to the family history uh, she is married with two healthy child and one sibling brother uh, no there is no history of similar illness among first uh, degree relatives uh, there is no history of any colorectal breast ovary uh, or pancreatic cancer in family uh or gallbladder uh, also gallbladder cancer in family there is no history of cancer related death in the family coming to personal history patient uh, takes mixed diet uh, her sleep has been altered recently due to this generalized itching uh, her bowel habit is regular uh, however uh, the recently the color of stool has been pale uh, with uh, soft in consistency and uh, it floats on water uh, bladder habit is normal Uh, there is uh, no habit of any alcohol intake uh, or tobacco usage in any form uh, there is uh, no high risk behavior uh, that we could elicit from history uh, in the patient and uh, there is no history of any drug allergy or food allergy coming to the obstetric history patient uh, has uh, two normal deliveries uh, and uh, had achieved surgical menopause 30 years back after the uh, abdominal hysterectomy that was done 30 years back. uh so coming uh, to the summary that we can get from the history it's a 65 year old married post menopausal lady that presented with painless progressive jaundice for the last one month with pale stool high colored urine uh, associated with weight loss anorexia generalized weakness and body itch without any features of colon uh now coming to the clinical examination uh, no, just tell me something what do yes, you mean sir. by high risk behavior uh high risk behavior includes uh, uh taking iv uh, uh drug abuse or uh, promiscuity uh, where uh, the chance of uh, sexually transmitted disease and hepatitis gets increased why don't you simply say there is no history of drug abuse why are okay, you sir, at a high risk behavior uh, yes sir we can go say drug abuse and promiscuity we can say that having mm-hmm. sexual uh, we can say sir high risk sexual behavior and uh, uh, iv drug abuse we can say No, why, do you, high risk why do you want to know about it in the case of obstructive jaundice sir uh, uh, sir i uh, it's a painless progressive jaundice yes sir painless progressive jaundice i need to exclude uh, uh, hepatitis induced jaundice uh, in this patient and uh, hepatitis b and hepatitis c uh, are uh, commonly spread through uh, iv drug use and uh, uh, sexual high risk sexual behavior sir so what is in the, your history that tells you that it could be hepatitis or what is uh, the sir. difference between the presentation of jaundice in hepatitis versus of yes, uh, hepatitis uh, associated is associated with fever and uh, painful jaundice sir listen to uh, the question listen to the question yes, difference yes, in the jaundice in patient yes, with hepatitis versus 
obstructive jaundice sir hepatitis is a hepatocellular jaundice and obstructive jaundice is post hepatic uh, uh, jaundice so, so what is there in your history to suggest that there is a hepatocellular damage sir in history uh, you are giving a typical history of a conjugated hyperbilirubinemia yes sir yes sir so sir, where is the diagnosis so where is the diagnosis of hepatitis comes what else disease, what are the other diseases which causes conjugated hyperbilirubinemia uh, conjugated hyperbilirubinemia other than obstruction sir yeah. uh, uh, sir in polystatic phase of uh, hepatitis we can find features which are very similar to uh, uh, obstructive jaundice sir so okay. uh, we need to exclude uh, hepatitis uh, because in cholestatic phase of uh, hepatitis uh, we, we can have features very similar to obstructive jaundice okay what else what other diseases sir uh, there are some uh, uh, genetic diseases uh, like rotors where uh, we can find this uh, features suggestive of obstructive like conjugated hyperbilirubinemia sir uh, rotors uh, what happens is that uh, uh, the bile conjugated bile should be uh, should pass into the bile canaliculi uh, to be excreted through the bile uh, but this uh, passage into the bile canaliculi in the liver doesn't happen because of some receptor absence uh, sorry sir i think uh, i have uh, missed this thing i think uh, it's in dubin johnson there are two types where this uh, conjugation uh, this uh, this thing happens sir i am not very sure i just forgot about this there are three types uh, uh, dubin johnson 1 2 and rotors in so, rotors, there is a so, conjugated hyper. So the moment, the moment you say you don't know, I'll have to ask you the pathophysiology of uh, or metabolism of bilirubin. What happens, how yes. it is formed, how it is yes, conjugated, sir. and how it is transported, secreted? Uh, bilirubin is formed uh, by breakage of uh, hemoglobin. The heme is, is converted to uh, biliverdin, which is... Uh, uh, converted to uh, bilirubin and uh, it is uh, transported via albumin into uh, un the unconjugated bilirubin bounds with albumin and it is transported uh, into the liver where it is uh, up liver cells uptake this uh, unconjugated bilirubin and uh, glucuronidation happens inside the liver cell which is called conjugation now this conjugated bilirubin is uh, water soluble and it is transfer it is uh, uh, excreted into the bile canaliculi uh, uh, this uh, conjugated bilirubin is uh, it is transported into the GI system through the biliary tract, where uh, it is uh, broken down into uh, urobilinogen by the gut bacteria, uh, and uh, this urobilinogen, 80% uh, of it gets absorbed, reabsorbed back into the systemic circulation. Uh, sorry, the the uh, portal circulation. Uh, and uh, this uh, this is called photohepatic circulation. This 80% uh, of the urobilinogen uh, gets recycled, recycled uh, uh, whereas uh, the rest of the 20% uh, urobilinogen is uh, excreted through stool and uh, it is converted to starcobilin by uh, further colonic bacterial activity, which gives the stool its color. Uh, this is an, in a normal uh, human being. This is the physiology of. Uh, metabolism and excretion of uh, bilirubin so what happens in dubin so what happens in dubin johnson and rotors sir uh, in dubin johnson this uh, conjugation doesn't happen this uh, there is a defect in the liver cell where uh, conjugation is uh, not happening no uh, in both the transport is affected conjugation yes, sir, takes okay, place conjugation okay, sir, takes okay. place. both of them are causes yes, of uh, conjugated hyperbilirubinemia Okay, so sir, you okay. said cholestasis, then you said obstruction. Yes, sir. Then you said Dubin Johnson, rotors, hereditary syndromes. Okay. What else? Sir, for uh, features similar to obstructive uh, hyperbilirubinemia. Yeah, conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. That is what your diagnosis is from the history, no? Yes, sir. Clay-colored stool, high-colored urine output, stool flo floats on the pan. So it has to be conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. And patient is all itchy. So it has to be conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. No? Yes, sir. It's uh, it, uh, from history. It uh, looks like conjugated hyperbilirubinemia, sir. So what else? From cause? I have discussed about the hepatocellular cause of conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Then there is this post-hepatic cause can be like obstructive obstruction Fine. can be of. Uh, Fine. Agreed. What else? Other than obstruction, cholangitis. Uh, I mean uh, obstruction. Then you have said cholestasis. 
Then yes, you have said hereditary syndromes. What else? Sir, the uh, commonest cause? Know about any drugs? Medicines? Paracetamol, penicillin. Uh, yes, sir. Paracetamol can cause uh, hepatotoxic uh, uh, features. Uh, even like oral, features even oral contraceptive pills. Yes, sir. Chlorpromazine. Yes. They have all? Chlorpromazine. Yes, so there are a number yes. of hepatotoxic drugs which can produce a similar picture. Yes. Sir. And what is autoimmune hepatitis? The autoimmune hepatitis is uh, uh, autoimmune destruction of liver cells, which can also have a similar picture where uh, this uh, post conjugation, the, uh, the liver cells get damaged and there is release of uh, bilirubin in the system. Okay, so what, is, so what is in your history that tells you that it favors obstruction over other causes? <clears throat> Sir, this uh, uh, pale colored stool uh, uh, and itchiness, these two factors are very similar. No, not itchiness. Itchiness occurs only because of conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. It is the it's pale colored hyper. stool. It's the clay colored yes, stool which tells you that probably colored. there is an obstruction because obstruction this, conjugated, the... this conjugated bilirubin is not secreting into, it's not going into the enterohepatic circulation. Yes, sir. So that is the only thing that points to an obstruction as a cause. Other than that, yes, there sir. are various uh, causes that... of conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. Yes, there are multiple hepatotoxic uh, hepatocellular causes. So, so we also need to exclude them. Yeah, you have to exclude them in the history itself. Sir, uh, on clinical examination, patient is a uh, conscious, cooperative, well-oriented with time, place, person, a febrile. Her performance status is Eastern Cooperative Oncology Group 1. Uh, weight 44 kg, height 140 cm with BMI of 22 and BSA of 1.3. Uh, her pulse is 84 per uh, beats per minute, regular rhythmic and normal volume. BP uh, 112 by 70 mm of mercury in the left arm in supine position. Respiratory rate is 14 per minute, thoraco abdomen. Jaundice was appreciated in upper bulbar conjunctiva and under surface of tongue and oral mucosa and was seen in natural daylight. Uh, apart from that, there was no pallor, edema, cyanosis or clubbing. The left supraclavicular lymph node was not enlarged as well as there was no palpable axillary or inguinal lymph nodes. Scratch marks were seen all over the lower limbs, chest and abdomen. Uh, spine examination was normal, uh, no gibbous or tender points and uh, there was no stigmata of liver disease. Uh, this is a clinical picture of the patient where we are seeing the bulbar conjunctiva and uh, the oral cavity under surface of tongue as well as the heart palate where uh, this uh, icterus is appreciated. This was uh, done in natural daylight. Now coming to the local examination on inspection. Patient was examined after explaining the procedure in a well-lit uh, room after informed consent with adequate exposure in a presence of a female chaperone. Uh, abdomen uh, is normal, scaphoid in shape, umbilicus being central and inverted. There is no visible nodule. Uh, all quadrants moving proportionately with respiration. There is a low midline scar of previous surgery. Scratch marks are observed on both the flanks. There is no visible dilated or prominent veins or any visible pulsation peristalsis. The hernial orifices are intact, no bulge on cuff. External genitalia was normal. On palpation, uh, palpation was done after proper consent, uh, explanation and post voiding. All the inspectory findings were confirmed. There was no local rise of temperature tenderness in any of the regions of abdomen. Liver was palpable, 3 cm below right subcostal margin in mid-clavicular line. It was firm in consistency, smooth surface. Uh, a non-tender globular-shaped lump, uh, 5 by 4 cm, was palpable in the right lumbar region with a well-defined medial lateral and inferior margin, where the inferior margin was 9 cm below the right subcostal uh, right costal uh, in the mid-clavicular line, and superior margin was in continuous with the lower border of liver. Uh, the mass was in smooth surface, firm consistency, and moves with respiration. Uh, no other mass was palpable, uh, even on deep palpation, and uh, no other tender points uh, or organomaly was uh, uh, was uh, demonstrable. Uh, the hernial orifice and midline scar, there was no expansion carpet. On percussion, the liver dullness was palpable from the fifth right intercostal space, and uh, on continuation, the span was found to be 18 cm in the right midclavicular line. Uh, there was no free fluid or shifting dullness. Uh, percussion over the lump was dull. And uh, this, part, this dullness was not separated from liver by any band of resonance. Uh, the rest of abdomen was resonant on purpose. Uh, on auscultation, uh, there was a normal bowel sound that could be heard, no bruit or venous sound. Uh, on digital rectal examination, there was no pile, seizure, fistula. The anal tone was normal. The stool uh, was there, which was pale in color. Uh, Blummer shelf was not appreciable. 
Uh, for the vaginal examination, cervix and vagina was normal and there was no palpable growth or bleed or any deposit that could be demonstrated. Other systemic examination was within normal limits. So in summary, uh, I would like to repeat the uh, history as well as the clinical findings. It's a 65-year-old married postmenopausal lady present with painless progressive jaundice for last one month with pale stool, high color urine, weight loss, anorexia, generalized weakness and body itch without any features of cholangitis. On clinical examination, jaundice uh, was appreciated without any stigmata of liver disease, uh, self-inflicted scratch marks along with non-tendered hepatomegaly and distended gallbladder without any palpable supraclavicular lymph node or ascites. So, sir, uh, based on the clinical examination and history, uh, my provisional diagnosis is obstructive jaundice due to cancer in head of pancreas. With uh, the differential diagnosis being cancer in GB neck with CBD infiltration, since it is a uh, uh, patient has come in from a uh, gallbladder belt, uh, and uh, apart from that, uh, I give another differential diagnosis of periampullary. So, what are the cancers which you find in the periampullary carcinomas? What are the tumors that comes in periampullary carcinomas? Sir, the term periampullary uh, uh, is defined by two centimeter area uh, surrounding the ampulla. So, sir, uh, in this area, four uh, different uh, histological structures can be observed in this in this two centimeter uh, area. It the it could be originated originating from the ampulla itself. Uh, or it could be originating from the duodenal mucosa, or it could be originating from uh, head of pancreas, which is within two centimeter of ampulla, or it could be originating from distal uh, bile duct uh, that is draining in the ampulla. So now you have a diagnosis of head of pancreas, and then you have a diagnosis of periampullary carcinoma. And so why not that? only a perihilar uh, cholangio? Why have you ruled it out so vehemently? Sir, because you said the gallbladder was uh, palpable, sir. Uh, what is so the definition of uh, extrahepatic uh, biliary tree? How do you classify it? Sir, uh, ma'am, uh, the extrahepatic biliary tree is uh, uh, from hilum, uh, the right and left hepatic duct, they join to form is it, is it is it is it from the hilum or the second order duct? How do you differentiate between intrahepatic, perihilar and distal? They are three different entities. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the second order uh, bile duct uh, uh, is uh, outside uh, the liver. Uh, from the second order bile duct. Uh, it's outside the liver or it's inside the liver? Ma'am, uh, it, mostly it is inside the liver, but uh, some, mostly it is inside Very the liver. Very rarely it is outside. Yes, second order we are talking. Second order, mostly it is inside, but rarely it can be outside. First so why are you second... you you tell me the classification? Don't hit here. Yes, what uh, is in? How will you classify uh, the biliary tree into intrahepatic, perihilar, and distal? The question is very clear. Intrahepatic, ma'am, up to the second hilar, uh, second uh, order of branching uh, of the biliary tree uh, uh, is in, included in the intrahepatic, starting from the right hepatic uh, and left hepatic duct uh, up to the hilum. It is called uh, and uh, up to two centimeter from the hilum. Uh, no, is there is no two centimeter or three centimeter. It's wrong. No, it is uh, from from the joining of the cystic duct. Uh, no, up to the joining of the cystic there is duct. no two centimeter, three centimeter. I'm telling you. You tell me the landmarks. Last time also when Kesha was presenting, I told you to read it. So from the second order duct till the joining of cystic duct cystic with the duct is with the, the biliary tree. It's the perihilar. Is the perihilar region, yes, ma'am. And then beyond it is the distal. Distal region, yes. So it's distal. a long region. Perihilar is a long region. So you can have it at just at the confluence or a little higher with no palpable gallbladder. Suppose it's not in the distal, it's only in the perihilar region. Why have you excluded it? How can you say it's head of the pancreas as your professional diagnosis? What suggests that it is in head of the pancreas and not, uh, not a periamp? Actually, ma'am, uh, based on the statistical data, uh, the head of pancreas has higher frequency uh, in painless progressive jaundice. Uh, head of pancreas has higher frequency in comparison to distal cholangio, perihilar cholangio, as well as CAGB. But, sir, ma'am, uh, out here, in, in, since this is a gallbladder belt, uh, uh, 
uh, we have seen more cases of GB neck with CBD infiltration. So that's why I have kept it as a uh, the second uh, most common difference. No, I don't diagnosis. agree that you can put a provisional diagnosis as obstructive jaundice due to CA head of the pancreas. Okay. I will you, not agree with this. You see, you see more of ampullary and cholangio after the gallbladder than the head of pancreas. And you cannot exclude perihilar. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I will. I, I understand this. You should say it's obstructive jaundice. Possibly because of either of the three, which I can confirm only after investigation. So, ma'am, in perihilar, uh, it's like uh, the tumor is at the junction of cystic duct uh, and CBD. So, in, for that reason, the no perihilar can arise anywhere between the second order duct and the junction. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so that is why I asked you, what's the landmark? Okay, ma'am. So, uh, for that reason, the gallbladder can, in, even in perihilar uh, cholangiosia, we can find a distended gallbladder. Times, yes. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. I got it. So why ma only CAGB neck with CBD infiltration? Why not an advanced CAGB with. Uh, what are the causes of jaundice in a patient with CAGB? Ma'am, uh, uh, there could be cause is being direct infiltration or by peri, uh, uh, periportal group of lymph nodes. Uh, external compression over the biliary tree can cause uh, obstructive jaundice, whereas uh, direct infiltration of tumor uh, within the biliary tree from gallbladder can cause obstructive Sometimes there is a tumor which grows into the CBD, the papillary yes, type. Yes, so what yes, in your history suggests that it is unlikely to be CAGB and more likely to be periamp or CA head or perihilum? The, uh, the consistency uh, uh, and the dimension the dimension uh, is not uh, the consistency of the gallbladder uh, led me to the diagnosis that it, it is less likely to be a CAGB. Also, from history, in history, uh, in yes, history, from, hmm. from history, there is uh, no history of any uh, upper right hypochondriac pain or any dyspepsia or flatulence or any history of any biliary colic uh, or fever uh, that could suggest that patient had any previous uh, biliary disorder, uh, gallbladder related disorder. Uh, for that reason, I have uh, not uh, brought it in the upfront, this uh, any GB pathology. Ma'am, uh, the first investigation that I would like to do was uh, is an uh, ultrasound abdomen pelvis, uh, which is an extension of my clinical examination. I would like to confirm my diagnosis by the extension of my clinical examination. So USG abdomen uh, was uh, quite diagnostic in this case, uh, where they found a uh, hypoechoic mass, uh, which was 4 by 3 centimeter with dilated ISBR, uh, intravenic biliary radical, and the CBD was dilated uh, 18 millimeter with abrupt cutoff, and pancreatic duct was also dilated 8 millimeter with abrupt cutoff. Uh, there was hepatomegaly with uh, no liver meds or altered eco texture. Uh, gallbladder was hugely distended with thin wall and no calculi. Uh, there was no ascites or any peritoneal momental nodularity, no periportal or peripancreatic lymph node that could be uh, visualized uh, in that ultrasound. And there was no sign of portal hypertension or splenomegaly. Uh, uh, coming to the routine blood investigations and some uh, special blood investigations. Why are you specifically stating portal hypertension here? What do you uh, expect to find? Nothing expected. I'm not expecting to find because based on history, patient is not uh, uh, having any stigmata of liver uh, disease. Uh, and from uh, So uh, I'm not expecting patient having cirrhosis or any extra hepatic uh, portal uh, venous what, uh, So what what can happen in a CA head pancreas? Something in the vein? Uh, in, in CA some head patients? pancreas, yes, some patient, if the CA head pancreas uh, obstructs the portal vein, uh, patient can have uh, uh, collaterals, uh, portal venous collaterals can develop, which can uh, Give uh, rise to features. Is it of always direct? Is it always direct infiltration and obstruction and all that stuff, or something else can also happen? Which is more common in HCC rather in C head pancreas? Portal vein thrombosis. Thrombosis, yes, ma'am. Thrombus, thrombus formation, yes. Uh, tumor induced thrombus formation. Okay, ma'am. So, blood investigation, uh, routine blood investigation, and some uh, tumor markers were done for this patient. Uh, I have highlighted uh, the investigations which were abnormal for this patient. Uh, out of which patient had a total bilirubin of 24 and direct bilirubin of 60 uh, with uh, uh, more than three times raised uh, liver enzymes and alkaline phosphatase was uh, more than 1000. Uh, CA99 was uh, in the range of 500. Uh, apart from that, uh, the uh, uh, there was no... So you did uh, CA99 in a jaundiced patient? 
how relevant yes, it is Yes, ma'am. Uh, it is not very relevant. Uh, ideally, then why did you do it? Uh, we had to see uh, a baseline uh, valuation. Uh, uh, after that, we could have decompressed uh, uh, the face tumor, and then we need to recheck the CA99 because. Uh, uh, is it where it is written that you have to recheck, or you have to do it after stenting only? And the significance uh, in malignancy of CA99 is uh, after uh, decompression of the biliary tract. Uh, because in obstructive jaundice, uh, the CA99 is also raised. But uh, when the CA99 is raised uh, beyond a certain value, uh, uh, more than 500, uh, then we consider it is more likely to be due to malignancy rather than uh, by obstructive jaundice or any other biliary uh, pancreatic pathology. Uh, it is based on the recent 2017 guideline where uh, 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 the cutoff mark was uh, placed as 500 CA99. Where so this cutoff was in a jaundice patient or in a stented patient? Uh, yes, ma'am. Actually, this cutoff was in a uh, non-obstructed patient. Then why are you justifying your wrong point? Do you know any conditions where CA99 is raised in benign condition? In all obstructive jaundice, uh, not all, but in most obstructive jaundice, uh, CA99 gets raised, yes, sir. It doesn't have a significance in obstructive system. But sir, uh, it generally doesn't reach in the level of uh, five, more than 500 or in the level of house. This valuation, uh, since even in spite it is not very specific, still the valuation of CA99 is kept as a good uh, 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 diagnostic as well as a prognostic marker, sir, uh, CA99. Yes, obviously, patient. Uh, it has been uh, written uh, that the patient with decompression is required to get the ideal uh, CA99 value. But sir, uh, uh, a high initial valuation, a high CA99 uh, does signify that patient could be having suffering from uh, pancreatic malignancy. And uh, based on other blood parameters, since the alkaline phosphatase was also very high, this also uh, signifies that uh, the, the, the this jaundice. Uh, more on the extrahepatic uh, uh, biliary obstruction. Uh, we uh, we had not done five prime nucleotides and GG gamma GGT valuation uh, because it is not available in our setup. But uh, based on this parameters also, we can say that this is uh, this picture, picture is more towards obstructive jaundice. After that, uh, based on the CT, uh, ultrasound finding, we needed to uh, understand better delineate uh, this uh, tumor. So. Uh, a triphasic CT with pancreatic protocol was performed uh, for this patient. Uh, I would like to uh, first uh, demonstrate, uh, I would like to read up what are the findings and I'm going to demonstrate some. Okay, uh, uh, I am, first I am showing some pictures where uh, this is the axial cut uh, where the portal vein can be seen and uh, uh, that, uh, this is the tumor which is more uh, over the uncinate region. Uh, a circular tumor can be seen and it is found to be abutting uh, of the portal vein but it is uh, less than 180 degree abutment uh, and uh, the sma can be, you can see the sma also in this cut but uh, there is a definite uh, gap uh, between the tumor and the sma in this patient uh, if we uh, see My the normal cut yes, yes, why sir. is your sma smaller than the portal vein sir the sma dimension wise sma is smaller than portal vein sir if, uh, if we go through the other pictures, we can also see uh, here we can see the coronal uh, cuts where uh, we can demonstrate the tumor which is not uh, abutting. Uh, I mean, uh, the abutment is uh, we can uh, we cannot uh, demonstrate the abutment here, but uh, some amount of contour deformity can be def demonstrated, or uh, we can neglect this because this is a very negligible contour deformity uh, where the tumor is. Uh, uh, what is the problem with this picture? Is this picture correct? Or there is something has happened while this picture was taken? Uh, yes, sir. There was some uh, artifacts uh, can be is there. There's a, the clarity of the picture is lost. Sir. Uh, the patient might have taken some uh, breathing during this thing. So there is uh, not very clear clarity is not there. So and, are, you uh, going to, are you going to base your decisions on a image which has which shows motion artifacts. Patient has breathed it while the image was taken. Uh, I, I just taken some uh, essential cuts uh, 
uh, where uh, the, I can I could demonstrate the portal vein. Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, the CBD uh, gallbladder being dilated, the CBD being dilated, and the uh, pancreatic duct being dilated. And uh, sir, I have uh, tried to uh, uh, demonstrate uh, in a video this tumor uh, with uh, the portal vein, where uh, I could I could demonstrate the tumor is uh, having some amount of contour deformity, but uh, there is no thrombus within the portal vein. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the the SMA and SMV are uh, separate uh, from the tumor. Uh, the plane can be, SMV has uh, some amount of uh, attachment, uh, but uh, abutment, but uh, SMA is uh, completely separate. Uh, so, for this team. which cuts do you see the SMA and SMV? No, the, ideally, it should be seen in axial cuts, sir. I, I, I have that axial cut with me. If you, sir, uh, uh, if you allow me, I can show the axial cut. So, why are you showing it why here? Showing it here? The, the issue that has happened with this patient is that uh, in the during the portal phase, there has been some image artifacts. That has led to uh, uh, little amount of haziness in in that region, uh, sir. This is uh, in the head pancreas uh, and the uncinate region, and uh, out here uh, I can demonstrate the portal vein, and just below is the SMA. Uh, the portal vein uh, is having some amount of ab abutment uh, uh, in the SMA PV junction region. Uh, uh, SMA is separate. SMV and uh, portal vein has some amount of abutment, and uh, the we could demonstrate the uh, pancreatic duct, which is what quite is, dilated. What is that some amount? It's less than 180 degrees. Abutment is less than 180 degrees. Okay. So uh, it is upfront resectable uh, case of uh, uh, CA head pancreas. What is the stage? The size is uh, more than four centimeters, sir, in the greatest dimension. So uh, it was a PT3 disease with uh, no lymph node that could be demonstrated. So it's a stage two disease, sir. And uh, since it was a uh, triphasic uh, pancreatic protocol, we could get a uh, arteriogram, uh, upper abdominal arteriogram, which also showed that there was no uh, aberrant uh, uh, artery, arteries uh, from the celiac as well as the uh, supramesentric uh, artery. Other investigation, uh, we did the chest X-ray, which was within normal limits, so we could did not go for any chest CT. And uh, endoscopic ultrasound was uh, not available uh, current, is not available currently in our setup, so we have skipped this. Uh, Why? Setup. What is the problem? So, sir, the final diagnosis is pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma, which is resectable with uh, eight AJCC uh, eight TNM staging as T3 N0 M0. Uh, with a stage of 2A. How do you uh, how do you call it a rectal adenocarcinoma? Say this is a neuroendocrine tumor, or ah, if sir. I may say there's some other pathology that exists or any other thing. Sir, neuroendocrine tumor is very hypervascular, and uh, it would have taken uh, that uh, uh, in that early arterial and delayed arterial phase also we could have demonstrated hypervascularity, which would have washed out in the portal phase. Out here it was a hypo. Uh, but Menak, based on a CT scan, how can you comment on the histology of the tumor? No, sir, uh, we cannot comment on the exact histology since it is the most told, common 95. He has been told last time also, and he is doing the same thing again. And uh, why any kind of tumor abutment is not borderline? You said there is contour deformity of the portal veil. And why do you think it is upfront resectable and not a borderline case fit for new adjuvant? Yes, ma'am. Uh, there was some amount of contour deformity. What uh, is the some amount? It is there or it is not there? So there was a solid tumor contact with SMV, no? Yes, yes, there was solid tumor contact with SMV. Yes. And there, it, it was, was less than 180 degree, I agree, but there was a contour yes. deformity. Yes, ma'am, there was a contour deformity. So it comes so, into a borderline resectable case. Yes. It's not upfront resectable. Yes, ma'am. Based on that contour deformity, uh, it can be kept in a borderline resectable. It can be, nahi, bhai. It is. What are the definition? How will you define a borderline? Yes, my borderline uh, uh, tumor can be defined head. based on uh, head. Uh, yes, my borderline for the CA head pancreas can be defined based on the arterial and venous uh, uh, structure surrounding the tumor. Uh, so, what uh, what does the venous venous say? Artery is completely free. I saw that there was a good fat plane. Yes. So, what yes, what are the statements included in borderline resectable disease? For yes, the venous is, system. The statement is right. It, it should be abutment should be more than 180 degree in the SMV PV junction, or if it is less than 180 degree, some amount of contour deformity, 
or uh, encasement of uh, the smb pv junction with uh, uh, sufficient length uh, above and below for uh, uh, for vascular closure so your case fits into the border line yes ma'am if we consider that as contour deformity it should be uh, are what do you mean if you are yourself telling that there is so you have to stick yeah. to your statement no actually ma'am this contour deformity was not uh, described uh, in the reporting but uh, while going through the images uh, we found so you that, have to uh, go and uh, but it's it's very close to the smb so you have to go and cross check with your uh, radiologist and in, yes, if, and in these cases eus is very important yes ma'am uh, us uh, was required but uh, since it was not done in our setup we could not uh, get the us fine air on the side of uh, having a advanced disease rather than having a smaller actually, disease it see head pancreas actually ma'am uh, based on the size of the tumor uh, uh, yes it, uh, it, uh, it it is on that actually we went to discuss uh, regarding that contour deformity but uh, the radiologist said that uh, it is not contour deformity so i have uh, excluded that uh, in my so what is it tumor is not pushing the vein uh, and arch causing the arching of the portal vein actually uh, uh, there is a contact uh, of the portal vein but uh, uh, when we discuss with the radiologist they have said this they cannot uh, say it as a contour deformity proper uh, i am not very uh, sure about that point uh, but if we consider it as a contour deformity then it will become yes, so what is a contour what, what do you mean by a contour deformity I am sure you uh, must have read NCC and guidelines, because that is all you read. So tumor less than uh, abutment less than 180 degree with contour deformity. What do you mean by contour deformity? The dimension of the portal vein uh, is deranged. Uh, when the uh, the diameter is uh, where the, at the point of contact, the diameter is uh, uh, distorted. Uh, that we considered as a contour deformity. So there is there is a narrowing, uh, or uh, in NCC and uh, guideline there is some. Uh, underlying thrombosis also that is also included in that uh, borderline dissectable suppose this is a borderline case and you uh, uh, give some new adjuvant treatment what do you mm -hmm. expect do you expect if a venous resection was required up front yes ma what will happen after new adjuvant treatment uh, if uh, if the by the new adjuvant treatment if uh, it is chemo responsive then uh, we can expect shrinkage of the size of the tumor and uh, what is the percentage of shrinkage you have seen uh, in studies that have reported or trials rather there have been number of trials involved how many times do you see a significant shrinkage in this tumor? no no ma'am uh, there is no data based on significant so you do this once then you completely turn around abhi to keh rahe the ki patient is chemo responsive and it shrinks significantly <coughs> So you tell me the data from the trials no sir no ma'am it is not about the, the it is it is said that the the, the chances of r0 resection is increased by giving new adjuvant therapy but uh, they doesn't none of the paper says ki the size diminishes and uh, the borderline becomes resectable it doesn't say like that say let's say it is a resectable tumor as you say yes sir yes sir even for a resectable tumor you have both options to go for upfront surgery versus a new adjuvant chemotherapy yes yes sir yes sir yes sir so how do yes, you sir. choose where you want to do an upfront surgery or where you want to give a new adjuvant therapy it's, it's based on the, the difficulty of the surgery sir if uh, we find that uh, doing a primary uh, resection anastomosis uh, of the portal vein is not possible mm -hmm. or we cannot take a wedge uh, it's just it's that is, just a that is again you are talking about borderline criteria i said it is resectable Okay. Okay, sir. Resectable. Yes, yes, yes. So in a resectable, in a resectable, you have both options. You have an option to go for new adjuvant chemotherapy, and you have an option to go for upfront resection. How will you decide which one want you to take, or what is the advantage of new adjuvant therapy in a resectable yes. disease? Uh, sir, uh, the, uh, based on the, the recent studies, uh, uh, the pancreatic cancer is also considered as a systemic disease. So there are always, in spite of uh, having R0 resection, there are chances of distant metastasis uh, in patients. So if we, uh, just like other in breast cancer and uh, other cancer, we give new adjuvant chemotherapy to uh, act on those micro metastases. That you already tell us, existed. excuse me, Manak, you yes. tell us the yes. trials that show that in resectable tumors, new adjuvant treatment has any value. Do you know of any trials? 
uh, yes ma'am uh, there are uh, some uh, new adjuvant trial that are uh, recently being uh, published new uh, adjuvant trials in resectable disease don't mix up dr pande has asked you a very specific question in a resectable pancreatic cancer suppose yes, there is no abutment it is a 2 cm clean tumor yes ma'am will you will you and the patient is fit will you give this patient any new adjuvant treatment or go for upfront surgery uh, ma'am in the recent uh, published jensen et al trial of uh, new adjuvant folfirinox the in resectable cancer they have uh, given new adjuvant folfirinox and they have shown that uh, the r0 resection uh, is better and the medial survival is also better in uh, in patient this is the jensen's uh, uh, trial this is not a trial published in published in, in i don't think there is any significant trial that exists what is when it was published it was published in 2020 ma'am jensen et al acha i'll cross check but it is uh, not a trial it is uh, this study has been published it's not a trial so there is no trial yet uh, which is uh, uh, showing uh, for resectable uh, but uh, for locally advanced and metastatic uh, role of new adjuvant therapy is uh, beyond doubt proven at, at Uh, अरे तुम कहा चले जाते हो न्यू एडवेंट थेरेपी लोकली एडवांस्ड एंड मेटास्टेटिक पेंक्रियाटिक कैंसर व्हेन डू यू से इट्स न्यू एडवेंट सॉरी ना आई जस्ट आई जस्ट इट सॉरी सॉरी न्यू एडवेंट इन द लोकली एडवांस्ड बॉडीलाइन डिसेक्टेबल इन केसेस न्यू एडवेंट ट्रायल आर देयर लाइक अलायंस ए 21501 ट्रायल कोरियन ट्रायल डच Pio Pank trial and MGH trial. These four trials are uh, recently being published, where uh, the role of uh, new adjuvant chemotherapy has been proven beyond doubt. See, uh, the question is operable. No, sir. In operable, in operable uh, at present, uh, uh, in operable, uh, I think the Alliance trial is checking for in case of operable, sir. I'm not very sure, but I don't think in operable uh, cancer. Uh, 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 yes yes uh, yes yes sir yes sir i remember there is the spec uh, 5f trial that is uh, going on uh, which is uh, studying uh, in operable uh, cases sir what was, SPAC, what was what was the result of spec 4 spec 4 uh, as said ki uh, spec 4 spec 4 uh, google karo it is it's on uh, i think it's on gemcitabin uh, based therapy sir uh, spec 4 you have not prepared Prio Pank one. Prio Pank is a Dutch trial, sir. It is uh, checking the new adjuvant gemcitabin uh, with gemcitabin with radiotherapy uh, uh, and uh, versus uh, uh, front surgery. So, uh, and what is uh, the patients that it has included? It, ha it has included, sir, uh, resectable. I think uh, yes, yes. It has uh, included resectable pancreatic CA, sir. It has included both resectable and borderline. you have not read it you are trying to google and answer the questions there will be no google at the exam see when you when you read nccn guideline i'm sure you would have read sir in the ncc when you see nccn operable nccn operable you can go for upfront surgery or you can go for new adjuvant chemotherapy both options are there what is the evidence for the upfront surgery what is the evidence for new adjuvant chemotherapy sir this uh, prio pank korean uh, uh, and alliance uh, actually i could not find them sir in the latest nccn sir they have not been updated uh, i think it will be updated this year so based on this resectable pancreatic new adjuvant in resectable pancreas they have not updated uh, all the trials that has happened uh, is going on or it has been processed sepo5 japanese trial uh, japanese trial sir there, is there, are, japanese there are number of trials there are number of trials yes, sir, there is oh. yes, there is way, way too many trials sir yes and you are not able to cite even one sir this are based on the resectable uh, in based on resectable cancer the role of uh, new adjuvant therapy i am saying sir in resectable cancer sir in case of uh, borderline as well as uh, in case of uh, uh, metastatic disease uh, the, the role of uh, uh, see we are not talking therapy. of that na we are talking pertaining to your case yes sir yes sir yes sir see your case, this case you are, you can either put your you have put your case as operable mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Doctor yes, Mallika says it is borderline operable. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. In both the cases, you have to tell me how are you going to take a treatment decision. You said it is operable, so we are asking operable. Mm -hmm. It is upfront operable. 
So in what cases are you going to give new adjunct chemotherapy? In what cases are you going to go for upfront surgery? Sir, uh, how, how will you decide the treatment? Ultimately, the purpose after getting an MCS surgical oncology is to decide what are you going to do. Sir, once uh, you have made uh, a diagnosis, uh, pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma resectable. Yes. So first you have said it is a ductal adenocarcinoma. You don't have an, a biopsy. No, sir. But it's okay. It's a pancreatic tumor, probably malignant. You can go for upfront surgery or you can go for new adjunct chemotherapy. So how are you going to decide? What are sir, the factors okay. that make you decide that what to do? So what is the evidence? Sir, what is the level of evidence? Sir, uh, uh, sir based on the... Uh, Apart from their anatomical uh, borderline resectability, there are some uh, bio biological factors and some conditional uh, patient conditional factors. Uh, based on the biological factors, uh, we look for the CA99 level. Uh, and uh, for patient condition, we look at the ECOG score. ABC, there have uh, been uh, the borderline resectability has been remodified. Oh, not only the anatomical borderline we check, we also check for the bio biological as well as the condition factor, patient condition. So, if the ECOG score is poor, then uh, uh, even though all the new studies that we are uh, going through, they are all are being done with a good ECOG uh, score, but uh, we need time to improve the clinical condition of the patient. If it, is a, if it is a ECOG-4, yes, the patient is neither fit for surgery nor fit for no, the sir. new adjunct chemotherapy. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. So, not only the anatomical uh, borderline, we also need to see the bio biological as well as the let's patient talk, condition. Let's talk of your patient who is ECOG-1. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. And yes, you sir. say it is resectable. Yes, sir. So, ECOG-1, pancreatic tumor, resectable. How yes, will you sir. choose the treatment? So these are the what are the trials that I am uh, discussing. They are uh, yet not standardized worldwide. So I won't be going based on those trials. Uh, we, we will wait for uh, some more uh, widespread phase three trials, and before that, we will uh, 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 go on based on our uh, uh, this, well, uh, upfront this is this is a wrong answer. Once once this comes in the guideline. That means there is enough evidence, at least level 2 evidence there to suggest that it can be done. Sir, uh, as I told you, sir, I could not find uh, for resectable tumor, I could not find any evidence in NCCN guideline at present, in the latest NCCN guideline. Then, then you should say, sir, we will go for upfront resection. So tell me as if you are operating and uh, what are the different types of uh, venous resections, the definition as per the I ISGPS criteria. Do you know what is yeah. ISGPS? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the International uh, uh, Society of Pancreatic Surgery Group. Society? Are you sure yes, it is society? Yes. Study group of study group. International. Uh, inter yes, International Study Group of Pancreatic Surgery. So you don't I, even know this? Hmm? Yes, ma'am. I, I know, ma'am. I just uh, forgot. I got, I got really ah, so that is important. You have to bring forth before the examiner. Yes, I have, have read it, it but you have to register it. And 10 times I have read that. Uh, so, what are the four different types of venous resection? Uh, I, I can't have you read it? No, ma'am. No, ma so, there can it. be a partial venorapy, there can be a patch, then can yes, be a segmental resection, and then can be a graft. Okay. So you should, should read their uh, position statement on this. They are very okay. clearly okay. classified. Okay, and where, what are the patches you can take from? Where you can take from? Where are the grafts taken from? Okay, ma'am, I will read up. It can be autologous. It can be prosthetic. How much portal vein you can mobilize? How to mobilize the root of the mesentery and lower the liver? Then okay, what happens to the SMPV junction? Yes, I mean anybody can ask you. So if there is a tumor in which you have to resect the confluence, will you join the splenic vein or not? Where else will you look for? Where is the coronary vein draining? So, padai nahi hai. When you are the moment you say venous involvement, you know there is a, another barrage of questions on. That's why I. Missed. So you you also read all these ISGPS definitions. Okay, they are yes, all available. Please yes, read. They are yes, they are very crystal clear and uh, they carry quite a weightage. And all the clinical trials. Especially yes, yes, in sir. pancreatic. 
impact right and obstructive jaundice you have to know 